While the Confederacy of Independent Systems was officially run by the Separatist Parliament, its true ruling body was the Separatist Council, a secretive body in which the most powerful corporate and political interests in the Confederacy were represented. The Council was responsible for funding, organizing and maintaining the CIS droid army and Confederate Navy. Most of the beings on the Council are known to Star Wars fans merely as background aliens from Attack of the Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith. But these characters had names and stories, and in this video, we'll be giving you a proper introduction to these fine fellows. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The Separatist Council was a small body, but surprisingly complex. The Council was led by Count Dooku, who represented the interests of the Confederacy's political leadership, and General Grievous, who represented the Confederacy's military leadership. Aside from them, the Council was composed of nine senators and corporate leaders. These beings were ranked on the Council according to the size of their investment in the Confederacy, with Viceroy Newt Gunray of the Trade Federation ranking the highest, and Senator Rogwa Wadrata the lowest. Many of the members of the Separatist Council also had aides that sat in on Council meetings. They were considered part of the Council, but didn't have a say in proceedings. Let's start by briefly discussing the Councillors you're probably already familiar with. Dooku, Grievous, and Newt Gunray need no introduction, and you're surely already familiar with the Trade Federation, the Confederacy's largest corporate faction. There's also Poggle the Lesser, the Archduke of Geonosis, who represented the Genosian Industries, the Hapla Passatisk Shipwrights Collective, and Geonosis and its colonies. Anyone who's seen Star Wars The Clone Wars should also be familiar with Watt Tambor, the foreman of the Techno Union and the senator from Skako. Tambor and Poggle were the architects of the CIS droid army, and between them, they represented the bulk of the Confederacy's droid makers. In addition, those of you who watched the video we made about her are probably familiar with Shu Mei, the Presidente of the Commerce Guild, who controlled many of the Confederacy's resource worlds. If you didn't watch that video, we suggest you do, as we won't be talking about Mei going forward. Now on to the lesser known characters. First we have San Hill, the chairman of the Intergalactic Banking Clan. Hill was a Mun, as was most of the IGBC's leadership, and he controlled a significant chunk of the Confederacy's financial assets. His agreement to work with the CIS was non-exclusive, which was necessary to maintain the clan's control of the galactic financial system. As a result, while Hill and many IGBC branches, among them Munilinst and Magito, joined the CIS, the IGBC branches on Scipio, Argao, and other worlds continued to work with the Republic. Despite his double dealing, Hill contributed immensely to the Separatist cause, making it easy for Separatist worlds to mint their own currencies and donating vast numbers of warships to the CIS Navy. He actually spent much of the war in Republic custody after being captured in the Battle of Munilinst, though he later escaped. While you might remember Sand Hill from the 2003 Clone Wars micro series, Pascal Argente, the Magistrate of the Corporate Alliance and Senator for Koriva, is a bit more obscure. The Corporate Alliance was officially a negotiating body meant to help member corporations collaborate on galactic-scale industrial projects. In practice, however, it was a massive monopoly that sprawled across several industries, binding its member corporations and encouraging its affiliates to identify with the Alliance as they would a religion. Under Argente, it fully devoted its resources to the separatist cause, edging loyalist companies out of the market in crucial rim sectors and forcing them into the Confederacy. Argente himself was much like Newt Gunray, except more headstrong. He took personal command of separatist forces in the first assault on Kamino and the Battle of Yukio. The Aqualish senator, Po Nudo of Ando, was one of the earliest supporters of the separatist movement, and after the start of the Clone Wars, the rest of the council voted to put him in charge of the Hypercommunications Cartel, a new conglomerate that would control all of the various separatist factions Holonet relays. Nudo was a high-ranking member of the Spiverelda, the extremely repressive government of Ando and its colonies. Like most Aquilish who supported the Spiverelda, 
He had a burning hatred of the Republic, as the Republic had prevented the Spivarelda from crushing the rebellious and Doan free colonies in a brutal civil war decades before the Clone Wars. During the war, the conflict between the Spivarelda and the Free Colonies resumed, and this time, the Free Colonies triumphed thanks to the help of the GAR, driving Nudo into exile. Senator Tykes of the Calamari Sector was not directly involved with any major mega corporation, but his influence on his homeworld, Dak, made him a powerful member of the council. Tykes, a Quarren, was a leader of one of the Calamari Sector's more belligerent Quarren factions, which he urged to war against their Mon Calamari neighbours several times during the Clone Wars. Tykes founded and led the Quarren Isolation League, which fought the Mon Calamari on DAC itself, and he also founded the Free DAC Volunteer Engineering Corps, an association of shipwrights that controlled the Quarren's most important colonies. Two of these worlds, Pamunt and Mintuin, produced a significant portion of the Confederate Navy, including a majority of Separatist flagships. The last proper member of the Separatist Council was Senator Rogwa Rodrata, a Holwuf who represented Aliga and the Falim Sector, an important Clone Wars battleground. Rodrata appears only briefly in Attack of the Clones, and precious little is known about her or her role in the Confederacy. Given her position on the council, she likely had ties to mining or something similar in her home sector, but that's speculation. Even more obscure than the councillors themselves were their long-suffering aides. If you recognise any of these beings, it's probably Runhako, the settlement officer of the Trade Federation and Newt Gunray's right-hand Nemoidian. Runhako is one of, if not the best, background characters in the prequels, known for being Newt Gunray's more sensible sidekick. Have you ever encountered a Jedi Knight before, sir? Well, no, but I don't. Seal off the bridge! Yes, sir. That won't be enough, sir. I want Roidekas up here at once! We will not survive this. Hako would have made a good politician. He was a good manipulator and had a feel for negotiation, which was mostly why Gunray trusted his advice so much. He was smarter and more cautious than Gunray, always weary and distrustful of the other counselors and their Sith allies. Harko was guarded and cynical, always sure to let Gunray know when he believed a scheme would go sideways, which was the case for most of Gunray's plots. Despite his close working relationship with the Viceroy, Harko wasn't Gunray's only aide. Another Nemoidian, Aratius Gunay, joined Gunray and Harko on the Separatist Council as an advisor. During the Council's initial meeting on Genosis, Gunray was present with yet another advisor. This character has been identified in various sources as Rune Harko or Trade Federation Senator Lot Dodd, but others have identified the Nemoidian as an entirely new character, Gilramos Libkath. Libkath was another of Gunray's advisors who had a liking for child slaves. He was killed early in the war by Boba Fett. We know very little about Kat Min, Shu Mei's Gossam aide. Min was silent most of the time and served Mei primarily as an administrative assistant, making sure that the commerce skills of mining worlds fulfilled their daily quotas for the Separatist war machine. There's similarly little to know about Denaria Ki, a Koruva who served as Pasal Argente's chief aide. Though Ki, like Min, was usually silent at council meetings, she had a different role behind the scenes. While Kat Min actually contributed to the Commerce Guild's war effort, Daenerya Ki spent most of her time acting as a yes woman for Magistrate Argente, who apparently had a fragile ego and needed constant reinforcement. Lastly, we have Nank Tun, Po Nudo's aide. As far as his boss knew, Tun was an Aquilish and a fellow supporter of the Spivarelda. However, unbeknownst to everyone on the council, Nank Tun was actually a Shido a member of a highly secretive race of shapeshifters. It's likely that Nank Tun was not his real name. Who he really was remains a complete mystery. Tun became part of Nudo's delegation while he was still in the Galactic Senate, and he remained by the senators after Nudo sided with Dooku, until both senator and aide were slain on Mustafa. It's unknown what Tun's agenda was, but as far as the law goes, he wasn't a Republic spy, contrary to what you might think. Regardless, Tun's shapeshifting abilities earned him access to the upper echelons of the Confederacy's leadership, making him one of the few outsiders to learn of the existence of Darth Sidious. Background characters are one of the best parts of Star Wars, honestly. 
Maybe we'll do a video on all the background Neimoidians from The Phantom Menace next. But what do you think? Would you be interested in that sort of video or longer videos on any of the characters we mentioned today? Free to post your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.